Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition, where I'm really focused on giving you insights and information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection. So are you in the mood for a bit of a race, maybe for treasure, and definitely unleashing your inner pirate? Well if so, then here's five things I think you need to know about Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. <music> In Extraordinary Adventures Pirates, you take on the role of a pirate captain, sailing a fleet of ships through the Caribbean. On your turn you'll play deckhand cards from your hand, to move your ship along one of the three tracks. Each route offers different merchants to plunder, and friendly ports where you can trade in your goods for treasure. And of course acquire a new and better crew to man your ships. The first person to reach the treasure galleon at the end of any track ends the game. And the winner and pirate king is the person with the most riches. Thing 1. What's this game all about? Well, Extraordinary Adventures Pirates sounds like it belongs in a series of games, featuring titles such as Extraordinary Adventures Vikings, or maybe even Extraordinary Adventures Cthulhu. Um, and perhaps it is part of a series of games, we just haven't seen the rest of them yet. But despite its unusual title, this is clearly a game about pirates. Um, and whether you love them or hate them, well get ready because this is pirates themed all of the way. Um, are pirates a particularly fresh and exciting theme? Absolutely not, there are tons of pirate games. Pirate race games, um, yeah, we've seen a number of those too. Um, and so this theme really doesn't feel like anything particularly special. Um, it's also one that is kind of thinly pasted on here because this game really could be about anything. Um, and it just seems to have fit pirates in around its mechanics. Um, overall though, this game is sufficiently piratey um, to fulfill all of your pirate needs. Um, and similar games to this, well, it certainly reminds me of something like Jamaica which is a race game where you're pirates, where you're picking stuff up on your journey, interfering with your friends, but this definitely feels like a much more grown up version of something like that. So this is clearly a racing game which is fueled by hand management and deck building. Its most ingenious feature is the fact that you don't just control one ship, that you control three. And each of them has their own areas of the seas um, which they're trying to make it to the end of the route, pick up goods, etc. This is really the main crux of the game here, deciding when to move which ship. Um, and I like the fact that you could ignore one completely if it was doing terribly and focus on other lanes to try and work your way to victory. Um, this idea of controlling more than one ship at a time is really, really genius and one I wish I'd seen in racing games before. Because as a house rule here, when we played, you know, the very famous Formula D, we used to control two cars each so that it wouldn't be too long between everybody's turn, but also that you had multiple ways to win um, so that nobody was out right away. And I love seeing that here. I think it really elevates this game from being a regular racing game. Now, there are no dice here to determine your movement. It all comes from your deck of cards, so it's still a little bit random. Um, but the kind of the focus here really isn't on deck building. It's more of a means to an end. And you can see this in the fact that on your turn, you draw five cards, but you only play three. And instead of discarding the final two and drawing a fresh hand, you keep those two um, to keep cards, I suppose, between turns. And I can see why this might be a positive thing, but for me, it basically felt like I wasn't able to get through my deck quick enough. And I think this highlights how little of a deck building game this really is at its core. Um, the difficulty with this game, I suppose, comes from these random cubes you put out at the start and trying to match up what the treasure chest wants with those cubes. Um, and that really is the most difficult aspect. Um, I sometimes wish, you know, you were able to have more of the cubes you wanted or trade them in for other colours, but it's specific and it means some games were easier to complete than others. Overall, this is a really fun family weight game with a good few tricks up its sleeve that really elevate it from being just another pirate racing game. Thing three on the table. So Extraordinary Adventures Pirates comes with a big, beautiful board and some lovely minis. Um, this is a game that's going to catch your eye when you have it set up. Now it is big, it takes up quite a bit of space, but the setup and the teardown is pretty quick because there aren't actually too many components. 
It takes about 40 minutes for two of us to play and I think this will vary greatly depending on player account and play style because you get to decide when the game ends. Um, the rule book itself is pretty straightforward but there were a couple of questions we had about timing issues that weren't fully explained in there. Um, now replayability wise I was concerned when my first couple of plays because the roots in the game never change. Um, however when you place out all those little cube goods um, and you reveal your treasure tiles that really changes the importance of the different lanes for different games and I, I guess that's where the replayability comes from. There is also an advanced game mode in which you get to place out pirates at particular locations at the start of the game and if you manage to get there and hand in a treasure the treasure is worth double the points or you can try and capture your opponent's pirates as well um, and this really kind of focused the game I think for us and it's a mode I think that's well worth experimenting with. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well you might want to check out my unboxing video for Extraordinary Adventures Pirates just to give you an idea how lovely a production this is. You get this big beautiful board, there are some fantastic miniatures, the cards are just right and all of it fits perfectly into its insert. Um, this is a really lovely made game. Um, now the art on the box um, it, I, don't, I don't particularly like it, um, I don't find it very appealing and um, this is carried through onto the cards that you use in the game and what's weird for me is I find them really incongruous with this beautiful map you have that's almost realistic um, versus all these kind of cartoony characters. Um, it seems to take the game down a notch for me. It's like that we're trying to combine like we're a family game so we'll have something fun and cartoony but we're also a serious pirate game so we'll have a serious board. Just pick a lane people. Um, but overall what this comes down to is this isn't the game I would have picked off a shelf myself based on the artwork. Um, now the iconography in the game is pretty good but I would like to point out that the white cubes in the game are actually grey on the treasure tiles and every so often I found that that would confuse me. Um, overall this is a beautifully produced game but you wouldn't know it from the outside of the box. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Well I think depending on what you're looking for out of the box here you're either going to be really impressed with this game or a little underwhelmed. Um, as like other forbidden game titles um, which are usually easy to understand, easy to teach, fun to play with interesting game mechanics Extraordinary Adventures Pirates is no exception. Um, I do think that this is a fantastic game to play with family and friends for fun and laughs. Now the issue I suppose I have here is that Yes, this is better than your average racing game. I think it's a real step up, but I don't know if it goes far enough to make it actually exciting. Um, I maintain that those three lanes for your ships really are the crux of the puzzle here and debating when to move things, when to take the cubes and such. But I don't know if that puzzle is enough to carry everything else in the game on its own. Um, I didn't find it exciting enough for me. Now, that doesn't mean that this isn't a great game. As I said at the start, this depends on what you want out of the game in the first place. I think this whole Pirates thing definitely has a lot of merit um, and it's definitely very interesting, um, but I think it's aimed at somebody other than me. Do I think you should have Extraordinary Adventures Pirates in your collection? I think this is a fantastic game if you want something light and clever that also allows you to talk like a pirate. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Extraordinary Adventures Pirates, why not shout them off in the comment box below? I'd really, really love to hear from you. And until next time, tune in again for some more short and informative board game reviews.